Okay, so there were a couple of questions asking if this, uh, we said that the lens law, according to the lens rule, the induced current tries to prevent the change that created it. And some of you were asking, why is it not complete? Uh, why doesn't it completely prevent the change that it's created? Now, the main reason is the resistance. Resistance of the material that prevents this complete cancellation. Well, we have objects that have zero resistance. So let's see how it works in that. So what did we, we got here? So here you see, this is a superconducting object. It is called by nitrogen, I, I think, on top of it. These are the magnets. So it just stays on top in the air without any, any uh, external force acting on it. It just stays, as long as the superconductor, it will stay there. Because if, in the case of this aluminum block, we had seen that as the magnet is falling down, it's the, mag the, the eddy currents are preventing the <coughs> slowing down the magnet. Now, this is kind of the opposite experiment in the sense that we are dropping down a conductor on a magnet, but the idea is basically the same. And in this example, the cancellation is exact. So if when you drop this uh, superconductor on a magnet, you are inducing eddy currents in the superconductor, and those eddy currents completely prevent the, the change that are creating, that will keep on creating those currents. Let's see. So we have quantum locking. The, the superconductor is locked in space, and it stays wherever I put it. Quantum trapping. It's amazing. As long as it's so the cold, super is superconducting. It's can frozen with liquid nitrogen. Upside down. So even if you just rotate it upside down, it doesn't fall down. I mean, in the in the first case when it is uh, the magnets are below, the superconductor is trying to fall down. But if it's falling down, it will be creating the eddy currents. But the, those are completely cancelled, completely blocked. Now, when it is upside down, the superconductor should fall down. That's what we would, uh, in ordinary matter, we, if there were no magnetic field, it will fall down. But the currents are such that it just prevents the falling down. Right. And it stays locked. So the fact that it's, it's superconducting is locking the magnetic field in three yeah. dimensions, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's and pivots. See, because this is a symmetric, it can rotate without breaking, without break the locking. The locking doesn't break. Right. Because it so it stays there on the, the X and Y, but not on, but the, it pivots on the... Yeah, on the axis of the magnets. If you see, if I can move it yeah. on the side, it will again pivot around the axis of the magnet, because it makes sure that uh, the magnetic field inside of it, about the track, quite high, and I can rotate it. So all this ring so is made up of surface. magnets. Yeah. So there is no, no, well, the only force acting on it is the magnetic force. It's the, it's the one creating the, also the centripetal force. There is no walls outside, but still the magnetic field created by these mag magnets on this ring. Well, this is also fun, so it's below there. Now let's do the other case. Now here we had one example where we had this magnet such that the North Pole is at the top and the South Pole was at the bottom. It was falling down on this ring and we had seen that the currents induced on this ring, on this ring are such that it will push the magnet away. Let's see the other case when the North Pole is closer to the ring. So here is the ring. 
And again, let's choose this as the positive direction of the, the current so that this is the angular, the area vector. No, the area vector is the other way around, right? Now, is the flux positive or negative? The flux is negative, right? So you see, if you just would plot one magnetic field line, for example, it will look like this. It goes from the above to the below. So it goes in the opposite direction to the area. So the flux is negative. So as the magnet is, appro as the magnet is approaching, does the flux in magnitude, does it get larger or smaller? The, in magnitude, the flux gets larger because there will be a larger magnetic field in the area within my ring. But this means that the magnetic field itself is getting smaller because initially it was something like, let's say, minus 3 tesla meters squared. So finally, after some time, it becomes minus 5 tesla meters squared. Minus 5 in magnitude is larger than minus 3 in magnitude, but minus 5 as a number is slow, smaller than minus 3. So that is why the flux is getting smaller as the magnet is approaching. Now we have the Faraday's law, which says minus d phi b. The EMF is minus d phi b by dt. This should be positive as the magnet is approaching. Po positive EMF just means we have a current running in the positive direction. So this is the direction of the actual current running through my system. This is the direction of the induced current. What is the direction of the magnetic dipole moment of the, this induced current? Upward. So I have a magnetic dipole which is pointing upward. This is due to my induced current. And then I have this magnetic dipole due to the magnet. So you can just think of this as the north and the south pole, north and the south pole. And again, they will be just repelling each other. So even if I would drop the magnet such that the north pole is below, is closer to the aluminum block, they will still repel each other consistent with Lenz rule. Lenz rule I repeat, it just states that the induced current will be such that it will try to prevent the change that creates it. In this case, the, the change that creates this induced current is the falling down of the magnet. So the current would be such that it will slow it down. By the way, this is basically nothing but energy conservation. So as the magnet is dropping, you are creating this induced current well, the current, uh, if let's say the wire has some resistance, you are doing some work. If you are doing some work, where does that work come from? It should be from the kinetic energy of the magnet. So the kinetic energy of the magnet should be lower than it would have been if there was no ring. So Lenz rule in this sense is nothing but a statement of energy conservation. Magnitude of the force, that was your homework, bro. Between two dipoles. So here you have two dipoles. The problem will be what is the magnetic dipole? The magnetic dipole will also, is also increasing with time. Well, I mean, you will need the computers to do that, but what you should do is kind of obvious, right? You, have a, you should first calculate the flux when the magnet is at a given distance calculate how it changes if the magnet is moving with velocity v. Cal from that information, obtain this current, and once you know the current, calculate the magnetic moment, and you have two magnetic dipole moments at a given distance, separated by a given distance. You should calculate the force from that, and from the force, you should obtain how the velocity changes as a function of time, etc. It will be te technically co complicated, I mean, lots of numerical code, numerical computation, but the principles is already there. You already know all the principles that would allow you to calculate that force. Uh, I have a problem with the experiment. Uh, since this doesn't fall, there is no change in my 
and it plugs. So there's no force. But it doesn't fall. Yeah, uh, well, the superconductors are kind of complicated. I mean, they are not this simple. But you can think of it like this. It's, it, it falls, let's say, it falls a small amount, which eventually goes to zero, which creates a huge current, which goes to infinity. So kind of the displacement tends to zero, keeping the force zero, force sufficient to keep it at that point, at that distance. Other questions? Can I ask again a question about this superconductor? OK. Uh, when yes, you can continue. Uh, when it's uh, turned upside down, why is it going to fall? Well, let's, let's look at this example. Let's assume this time the magnet is fixed. And let's consider this ring over here. And, well, if we just release the ring, it will try to fall down. It will start falling down, right? Well, if it's falling down, it means that it will, there will be the flux going through the ring will be changing in time. So there will be a current induced. What should be the direction of the current induced? Well, let's start with what is the flux phi b? is less than zero. So if the loop is falling down, the magnitude, let's say this is A, the magnitude is getting smaller and smaller. It's going away from the magnet. But that means, since it's negative, phi B is increasing. Epsilon, which is minus D phi B by DT, which should be less than zero, that means there will be a current induced in this direction. This will be the induced current. Now let's see. Here I have a current running in this direction. There is a magnetic field at that point that's, let's say, in this direction. What will be the direction of the force acting on that segment of the wire? Well, you see, we said that this is the direction of the induced current. So at that point, the current is into the screen. The magnetic field is something like in that direction. The direction of the force acting on that segment, on this segment. Now, this is I, dl. This is B, dl cross B. The force is upward. So this is the force acting on that segment. So the ring as it's falling down, it will be feeling an upward magnetic force. In the case of the superconductor, it's enough to balance the gravitational weight. So it will not fall down. Now, any last minute questions? OK, so there is one more survey for you. I hope you are not fed up with the surveys in this, in this uh, class. But this time, it's a survey that we are conducting as uh, the, the physics department. And what we are, the, the survey, uh, your assistant will be explaining probably in more detail. The basic idea of the survey is this time we have both the Turkish and the English surveys. So you can just pick up whichever you want. The idea is why, do you choose, why did you choose to study physics? Why did you choose to study in METU? And we are hoping to do this survey for in the future years also to see how it's modified throughout your education. And see you next week.